recognize that it is member statements. Member statements. We recognize the member from University of Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. Erin Clifford and her partner John both work from home full time. Their daughters, Addison and Cara, attend Montrose Public School. During remote emergency learning, Addison, a grade one student, struggled to keep up with her class. It has been heartbreaking for the family to watch Addison's confidence disappear as she falls further behind. Erin and John have done their best to support Addison, but it has been impossible to keep up with the demands of work, childcare and learning at home. If schools don't reopen full-time in September, Erin is considering leaving her job at the University of Toronto to ensure Addison gets the one-on-one -on -one support she needs. This story, Erin, Addison, Cara and John's story, is happening all across Ontario. If school does not reopen in September, there are working mothers, especially working mothers who are going to be losing their job. There are parents who are at their wits' end. They are frustrated, they are exhausted, they are worried, and they don't know what they're going to do if school doesn't safely reopen in September. Now, this government has put forward a work it out yourselves board plan with no real funding commitment and no real support for school boards to allow them to return teachers uh, and kids safely. That is not a plan that is an abdication of responsibility. Parents, teachers, kids, they want this government to come up with a real plan, a real fully funded plan that will get kids to return to school safely. Please do that. Member statements. I recognize the member from Don Valley North. Thank you, Madam Speaker. When we see instances of racial discrimination and hatred towards Chinese Canadians during the pandemic, like the disturbing video of a shopper at a Mississauga store last week, it is hurtful and offensive to us all as Canadians. The victim of the racial abuse I referred to was told to go back to China simply because he asked the patron to wear a mask. In response to the racial slur, the victim proudly and clearly stated, I am Canadian. Speaker, I too am Canadian. There are several hundred thousand Ontarians, people just like me, Canadians of Chinese descent who proudly call Canada home and contribute richly to our economy and culture. During the pandemic, Chinese Canadians united and organized to help people from all different backgrounds out of the goodness of their hearts. They kindly donated PPE, food, and money while also promoting and following health and safety guidelines to protect others. They acted in the true Ontario spirit as proud Canadians. Speaker, here I call all for all Canadians to stand together to denounce racism and show the world what it means to be a Canadian, just like the victim stated, we are Canadian. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, last week I had the pleasure to meet with a group of early childhood educators, the Thunder Bay ECE Unite Group. What a great group of dedicated and devoted women. This group is concerned with this government's lack of concrete plan for childcare, and so am I. Kim Keevey, an early childhood educator, told me our before and after school care is licensed for 30 children, and according to the ministry, we now can only take 10 people. So there's eight children and two educators. That means there's 22 children that do not have care. We were already in a crisis in Thunder Bay with uh, childcare with years long lists, and now post COVID we're worse. Despite the government's announcements of a sustainability plan for childcare, childcare operators have not received concrete funding agreements. Throughout the pandemic, this government didn't communicate critical changes to rules around funding to ensure the continued payment of staff. They also did not consult with the centres on a safe reopening strategy or provide funding to help centres adjust to the new safety requirements. This government needs to stop paying lip service to the importance of childcare and start actually supporting them. 
so that they can keep their staff and avoid massive debts. A safe reopening of Ontario will not be possible without a clear plan for childcare. Member Statements, the member for Oakville, North Burlington. Speaker, parents in my constituency of Oakville, North Burlington are very concerned that too many young people have taken up vaping. Since January, we've held two roundtable meetings that included Halton's Medical Officer of Health. These participants at these roundtables expressed their concerns to me and asked for all levels of government to take action. A 2019 CAMH survey found that vaping use by youth has almost doubled in two years. Almost a quarter of students in grades 7 to 12 have tried a vaping product in the past year, and one in eight students were vaping weekly or daily. And 83% of users aged 15 to 19 report using fruit or candy-flavored vapes. These numbers are alarming to me and to parents. Our government heard the concerns of parents and we took swift action. As of July 1st, the Ontario government has restricted the retail sale of the most flavored of most flavored vapor products and those with high nicotine concentrations to specialty vape stores and licensed cannabis retail stores. And specialty vape stores now must ensure that any indoor displays and promotions of vapor products are not visible from outside these stores. Those who break the rules could face fines between $4,000 to $150,000. Vaping is a serious risk to the health of our young people, and it's important that parents find out more about the dangers of vaping and make sure their teens have all the facts. Member Statements, the member for Waterloo. Thank you very much. Throughout the most of the pandemic, we've seen a disproportionate impact on women. Women are more likely to work in caring jobs as nurses, PSWs, early childhood educators, midwives, or in the retail or service sector. All of these women are at a higher risk of contracting COVID-19, putting them and their families' health in jeopardy. Women also make 78 cents on the dollar when compared to men. For racialized and Indigenous women, it's even less. And whether there is a global pandemic or not, women always disproportionately bear the greater responsibility for childcare. So yesterday, when the government announced that in a few days' time, much of the province would be moving to stage three, women across the province were left with lots of questions. What about my health and safety at work? What am I going to do about childcare this summer? How can I go back to work full-time if my kids only go back to school part-time this fall? Lots of questions with few answers from the government. Uh, the government announced that childcare will be allowed to reopen at 90 per cent capacity as of July 27th. Why 90 per cent? Is that threshold safe? Has the government provided extra support for ECEs and childcare centres for PPE? No, they have not. Before any of these reopenings happen, questions need to be answered. Women and parents deserve answers, and they need support. Our health and, indeed, our economic recovery depends on it. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Next, we have the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, Ontario's children need to be back in school full-time in the fall. This must be our collective priority. It's not just important for our kids' education, their development, their mental health. It's a cornerstone of our economic recovery. Getting kids back to school full-time enables parents and caregivers to get back to work, to fully participate in the workforce and Ontario's economy. This is especially true for women who, more often than not, have been carrying the freight with our children out of school. For many, their careers have been disproportionately impacted. Speaker, just like we did in our hospitals at the beginning of this pandemic, we need to invest more in our schools. We need more educators, more supports, extra spaces for children to learn so we can keep our class sizes smaller and safer. We must also ensure that local public health units have the resources and the tools they, they need when our schools open up. And just like in healthcare, the government needs to establish a command table that includes parents, student, school boards, teachers' federation, and public health. Speaker, our party has put forward an action plan to invest in our schools. Simply put, it's the most important thing we can do for our families and for our economic recovery. Thank you, Speaker. 
Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. We all recognize that, other than our health and safety, COVID-19 has heavily impacted our economy. I had organized town hall Zoom meetings since April and continued till June to support businesses in Richmond Hill. I am grateful that MPP Stanchel, Minister Leche, and Minister Pratmeet Sakaria joined me in Zoom meetings with businesses and families working with them on their challenges. I also joined Recover Richmond Hill Task Force working with the City of Richmond Hill and Richmond Hill Board of Trade, as well as Markham Richmond Hill and Vaughan Chinese Business Association. Working together, we identified programs and strategies to assist them to realign their operations and reestablish normal business. We provided individual support and hosted a series of seminars to prepare them on handling their challenges. It is really encouraging to see some Richmond Hill businesses, corporation, they also stepped up to support the community with PPEs and other materials. What a difference it made during these difficult times. Today, when I visit the local businesses to promote the Shop Local program, I am touched by the positive attitude, determination, <clears throat> and willingness to put extra time to make up for the challenges caused by COVID-19. I know our economy is on its path to recovery. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. Member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. We are going through uh, never before seen times with COVID 19, and some parts of the province face different problems than others. And I'd like to focus on a unique problem that one of our towns is facing right now Kirk and Lake. And they are facing a lot of problems with black bears. And black bears haven't heard about physical or social distancing. No. In Kirkland Lake, there's actually a Facebook group where they keep live track of where the bears are going. Wow. Now, if this was happening in a town in southern Ontario, this would be provincial, perhaps national news. But it's just another day in northern Ontario. Just another day. Keep your kids inside. Just another day. Could you imagine in southern Ontario if there were bears roaming around and they were told, keep your kids inside? Bear wise suggests. <laughs> not a very now, wise. the bears are hungry. We're not anti bear. And MNR is doing what it could with the, with the budget it has. But keep in mind the differences in this province. There are huge issues in this province with COVID 19. But there are parts of this province who have to wonder if there's a bear outside the door on a regular basis. We have to look at all our issues. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Saman and Charlie Lokuwadugay, a father and son who fled civil strife in Sri Lanka two years ago and bought the East and West Diner in Richmond, donated commercial-grade disinfecting products to the Ottawa Police Services Leitrim Station. Ross and Manitic, an organization supporting rural seniors, has, among other things, been providing transportation for essential medical appointments, delivering frozen meals, and offering grocery deliveries. Alan Ryan, president of the Stittsville Business Association, teamed up with Ross and Coraline Bradley to provide gift cards, lunches, dinners, and more to the Ottawa Police Service Huntmar Station, Ottawa Fire Services Station 46, Ottawa Paramedic Services, and staff at local pharmacies, retirement residences, and grocery stores. Manitic Village Community Association started a community Facebook page that, among other things, helps single parent families or healthcare workers who may not have time to shop, coordinating with the Kiwanis Club of Manitic, who created a con community pandemic volunteers list. Greeley and Metcalf Lions Club partnered together, pledging $5,000 to a matching funds campaign of all other donations to the Osgood Care Centre. John Stacey, owner of Stagra Automotive in Greeley, donated funds for a special staff meal at the Osgood Care Centre. 
Gary Crepin donated N95 masks to the Osgood Care Centre. Ron Miller, owner of Miller's Farm Market and Garden Centre in Manatech, bought a meal for every single resident at Highfield Apartments in Manatech. The list goes on and on, Mr. Speaker, and unfortunately I don't have enough time, but I'd like to thank everyone in Carleton who stepped up to make a difference during the COVID-19 pandemic. You're an inspiration to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And today I rise to bring attention to an important charitable non for profit community centre in Etobicoke Lakeshore, the Franklin Horner Community Centre. Franklin Horner is a home uh, and hosts a variety of programs, services, and meeting space for community organizations, groups, and individual members. They welcome groups of individuals of all ages and multitude of activities for all. But just like everyone here, they had to reinvent themselves during this unprecedented time. Last week, I had the pleasure of joining their dedicated team as they kicked off their new weekly meal service for seniors called Food for Faraway Friends. It's a program to get seniors out of their homes if they feel safe to do so. Hot meals can be picked up at the center or delivered to individuals' homes. And they also have a tent set up outside called the Big Top Cafe, where you can enjoy some snacks and drinks and a social distant conversation with a new friend or an old friend. Franklin Horner Community Center offers recreational leisure activities, including health education, fitness, an amazing woodworking, woodworking room, day trips, crafts, art, and congregate dining for our seniors. And I had the opportunity to visit this centre earlier this year with the Minister of Seniors Accessibility, Ms. Um, Minister Cho, where he participated in an exercise program and shared some fun stories. I would like to thank Laura Latham, of Executive Director, and her team for the amazing work that they're doing in South Etobicoke and looking after the mental wellness of our seniors. That concludes the time we have for member statements this morning.